there, Tenzi here. Today we'll make this crochet towel topper and together with this towel with apples we'll make a great teacher's gift. Make sure you subscribe and like this video. First we need to prepare our towel. Let's open it first. All right, so I want to use both of the designs here. So I will cut it in two. In this one, I'll make two towels out of it. And then we'll fold it this way actually in two. And then we'll make sure it's exactly in the middle. And I will make a little cut from here. And I will go to the other side and I'll do the same thing so I can find the middle exactly. So there is my middle. All right, so this is so now I have to make completely straight line so I can so I can make sure both sides are exactly the same. All right. Let's see. So here is my top cut and here is my bottom cut. Let's measure. How many inches is that? That is exactly 13 inches. So I'll go ahead and measuring from the edge to the other side, I will mark my 13 inches with some tailor's chalk, or maybe you can get a pencil. So this way I'll have 13 inches exactly and I'll just connect the dots and I'll make a few more marks to make sure I'm on the correct correct place all right And over here. Okay. And then let me check this side. This is also 13 inches here, my slit. Okay, now I can connect my yellow dots here. And I will have exactly two sides that are the same. And well, we should have measured first because they say measure twice, cut once, but it's still good. We are still good. It's uh, 13 inches on this side as well. All right, yep, we did good. There. So now we will, I will fold over the top side and we'll go from there. We'll prepare our base for the All right, so let's start crocheting the top. I want to go with white color to put my foundation here. However, since it's not going to be able to, to be seen very well on camera, I'll go with pink, but then I will redo it again in white. So I do my, my first slip knot and um, try to get a hook that's thin enough 
to go through your towel and just enough to be able for you to, to pull your yarn through easily. So this, this cook is quite small, even though the, um, the yarn requires, I think, two and a half millimeters, I'm using one and a half and I'm still be able to, to work with it. All right, so I'll start here at the corner of my towel and I will be able to pull through my first loop and I'll, I'll give it just enough space to go up the towel. And I will pull through once through it. So this will be my beginning here. And I will chain three. Okay. So then I will go in the same first hole that we did. And then I will give myself about a centimeter till the next stitch and I'll go into that spot here. You can just eyeball it, you can use a ruler and make tiny dots to decide where you want to go. And I will pull it gently up till the top of my towel edge and I'll go through all those three loops I had on my hook. All right, let's try again. Chain three and then we will go in the same hole and then we'll go in one next to it. Okay, so we'll go in the same loop over here. We'll pull it gently up and then we will go in about a centimeter here and I have tiny little grooves on the towel so I'm actually counting those little two um, patterns here on the towel and it, it's going to help me make them really equally spaced. So I will go back again, grab my yarn, pull it up on top of the towel and now pull yarn over and pull through all these three loops you have on your on your hook. All right, we'll chain three. Go into the same hole. Pull through. Measure about a centimeter to the next spot poke through the fabric or your towel, pull your stitch up, yarn over, pull through all those three loops at the top. So you can keep going here till the end or I will switch to my white color and I'll redo this again. almost done here at the corner so here I went through the hole and here how the back looks like and let's finish it having the same the yarn and your towel the same color it it actually is a good visual trick because because in case those stitches are not um, equally spaced or they're big or small, it kind of doesn't doesn't look bad. But if you had like a contrasting color, the, you could tell the difference. Like one stitch is a little bit shorter here, one is a little bit longer. So this gives you a little bit of a wiggle room to make mistakes. All right, so here I go in the last stitches. Go here one more time. And that one. It's nice to have tools that are different sizes. They it's definitely helpful. 
so I got this a whole set of like 13 or 14 crochet hooks different sizes and it helps me switch between hooks let's say and like if I can grab one more no this will we'll do it just a needle and finish it there okay so there I'll make an extra chain here so I can secure it better and my scissors here and then I'll get the needle and se secure my ends here of course if you have a sewing machine and you sew your fold fold overs on your sewing machine this would have been prevented now that we have our top ready we i will follow the lines for this towel because i did not wash it and i will fold it in three again like the way it was folded at the beginning and here it is so fold it here in the back you can put the edge inside that you don't like and there and make sure your your pattern your pictures are centered in the front since we have those loops on top we will use them so let's add our next color since i want to make this one as a teacher's gift i will use a red color on top for my towel topper there I'll make my slip knot here and I will start and I'll be grabbing those the um, chains that I did when I was putting the foundation here but I will go two at a time or three at a time so I can grab all these three layers at the same time and let's start from the, the beginning here we will have a nice little slip knot that will pull through all those layers here chain two and now you can carry your tail in between or you can weave it in at the end it really doesn't matter and then we'll do two double crochets in each spot so there we'll count the first chain as a double crochet so let's go to the next one yarn over for a double crochet we are grabbing both of the both of the layers here because the third layer is a little bit far away and then double crochet here and one more time yarn over go through the first loop go through the second loop check if you need to go through a third loop and it looks like i have to go here pull through pull through and one more time in the same spot and i'll keep going till the end okay here i am at the end and i'm doing my last space and there we are first row is ready so here is how it's from the front and here how it looks on the back so all three layers are together and we are ready for the next row turn turn around and then we will chain two keep the first space here and then we'll do another one here and i'll go till the end of the row like that okay here i am at the at the last one so at that last spot remember we we skipped one at the beginning so we'll skip this one and we'll do just a double crochet into that first chain we did 
so we can start decreasing and going up. So we skip again that first spot, we skip again that second spot and we go into that third and we chain two before we do that and there we'll do us another set of double crochets. All right, so we skipped here one space and the one before the, the um, chain. So here we are again at this beginning. So we will finish those two double crochets here and then we'll do one double crochet into that last double crochet. Find that chain on top, the stitch on top and then do a double crochet there. So you can see now how the sides are getting smaller and smaller. So let's go one more time. Turn around, chain two, and then skip the first space, skip the second space or the first between the clusters. This is it's however you wanna count that one and do two double crochets and keep going like that. And we are again at the same spot. We have those two spaces left. We are over for a double crochet. We go on the top of the double crochet here. We make a double crochet and we turn. So now that we have six double crochets next to each other, we're gonna make that little strip that we're gonna use a button for to go and so we can hang it. We will go into that first stitch. We'll do a slip stitch here. And we'll chain two. We'll start building our flap. So we will do double crochets here into the next stitch. And we will count the first chain as a double crochet. So now we have four, five, and six. We will go into that last double crochet. And we'll keep going with those six stitches Till it's long enough. So chain two. Don't go in with that and the bottom of this one, but go into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch. And then we go again. All right. So remember, we're gonna go with six stitches, but we have five so far. So we will go, we are not gonna forget to go into that last chain we are there. Okay, so find, there are usually three, three threads or three strands. So go through the two of them. And there, now we can turn. Chain two. So I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows of double crochets here for the hanging part. All right, so here now. We will make, so we're gonna pick that middle stitch and we'll make a little fan to make a little nice edge here. And so we will go into that empty space where is gonna, our button's gonna go through. So we will try to make it more open and visible. And we'll put our double crochets for the fan there. All right, so yarn over and a double crochet here. 
and let's keep going with the double crochets. So make sure you end up on the side when you fold it over, those double crochets will be facing on your right side. So we are kind of working on the back side, but when you fold it over and when you put your button through, this will be your front. So that was the reason behind stopping at that number of rows as well. All right. Here I think, let's see, we have two, four, six, eight. All right, so we can stop here. So at the beginning here, at, the, at be, that beginning chain, we will find the two loops again. We'll pull through them. And we'll do a slip stitch here and a chain to secure it. And there we have a, hole, a buttonhole now at the same time and we have a nice round finishing edge. All right, so we'll secure it and we'll pull it through here. Make sure you go on the in the back and go through under your stitches and just hide your end. All right, now cut this one from here. And let's double check here for ends. There are no ends as well. And now I can find my button. If you have an apple button, it will be great. I see here a hard button and I think it will be awesome there. Okay. And I will go ahead and I will saw this. So, so your teacher gift is ready to go. Make sure you subscribe and like this video.